Hey, I'm Bob World Entertainment. And Disney CEO Bob Iger is in full panic mode with the now disastrous performance of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania at the box office with Star Wars pretty much dead in the water and backlash, not to mention being ratioed to oblivion with the Disney remakes of the likes of The Little Mermaid and the new Peter Pan and Wendy. He is in full panic mode and is looking to cut costs. Which is no surprise, seen as the likes of Ant-Man cost over $200 million to make. Then you add on the promotional material, which included a $30 million uh, Super Bowl commercial. And the movie looks like it's not even going to crack $500 million. Let's have a look at what he said. There's a report here over at the Hollywood Reporter. That has what he had to say. So they write, Disney CEO Bob Iger said Thursday that his his company <laughs> is closely examining all aspects of its content business across film and TV as it plots to uh, plots the best path forward in a tricky media environment. That includes a linear TV business in decline, a theoretical film business with an uncertain future, and a streaming business that is growing but requires a path to profitability. Stop putting shit on it and you'll probably get some subscribers. <laughs> Speaking at a Morgan Stanley conference, Iger said that the company will specifically be looking at how much it is spending on content. So, so, Iger has said this. I'm really pleased that the support that I'm getting from the content creators of the company is significant and real. And it comes in the form of reducing the expenses per content, whether it's a TV series or a film, where costs have just skyrocketed in a huge way and not a supportable way, in my opinion. It's, what, what the hell does that even mean? The content creators are standing by me because I'm cutting costs it's their jobs what are they going to do turn around and tell you to fuck off you idiot no you can't take my 250 million away from this project that will probably fail stupid they all agree with that Iger said adding that it was also about understanding how much volume we need reducing how much we make so it's how much we spend on what we make and how much we make. Um, you don't make that much, to be honest. Not in terms of good content anyway. So, However, Iger left open the potential for making content that the company could sell elsewhere. Now, he's not talking about selling the IPs altogether. He's talking about, we'll make it, but we'll try and get someone else to distribute it. So he says, And as we look to reduce the content that we're creating for our own platforms, there probably are opportunities to license to third parties, Iger said. For a while... That was verbatim or something we couldn't possibly do because we were so favouring our own streaming platforms. But if we get to the point where we need less content for those platforms and we still have the capability of producing that content, why not use it to grow revenue? And that's what we would like to do. Okay, huge problems with what he said there. 
he's just talking about we can't keep making content for Disney Plus. Well, what exactly do you plan to do with Disney Plus then? Because he's saying, even if we can make the content for it, we're not putting it on there. We're going to sell it to a third party. So we'll sell it to Paramount Plus or we'll sell it to HBO Max or maybe Netflix. Your whole streaming service is based on new content. New content. What are you going to do? Stop banking stuff for Disney Plus and just tell people to watch the old stuff? That's not what people sign up for. When they promoted Disney Plus when it was launching, do you remember what the two main things they advertised was? It was Star Wars and Marvel. And the reaction from almost everyone was, why would I sign up to a new service when I own all that Star Wars stuff and all that Marvel stuff? I don't need to pay you more money to watch what I already own in physical media. And now he's talking about not putting new stuff on Disney+. Plus. I don't think he understands how things work. He added that the core franchises, Marvel, Star Wars, Frozen, etc., would remain exclusive to Disney's own platforms. Yeah, because you overspend for the majority of them. and you know, Why would you sell them? Not that they're bringing you in money anymore. Star Wars hasn't. Hasn't been a Star Wars movie on the big screen since 2019. <laughs> Star Wars is dead. They, they managed to kill Star Wars. And where the films would fail, the merchandise would keep you sustainable. They've managed to even kill the merchandise end of Star Wars. So I love this part. Wait till you hear this. Disney is very strong. The most powerful brand certainly in family entertainment Iger said adding that when consumers see the live action Little Mermaid in May it'll remind you just how strong the brand is have you seen the reaction to Little Mermaid you jackass it's been ratioed to hell on YouTube with the like to dislike ratio it's so bad, he has turned off comments. That's right, they've turned off the comment section. You cannot comment on it. And he's trying to say, The Little Mermaid, which will no doubt flop, or at least come well under expectations, is going to be the movie that reestablishes the brand of Disney. With people. <laughs> what a lunatic. And, and no, Disney is not a very strong and the most powerful brand. I like though that he had to add in, uh, certainly in family entertainment, no universal movies. The animated movies like Minions and Despicable Me and stuff like that have been destroying the Marvel movies. For the past three years. Yeah. So you're not exactly the top dog. And now a Marvel for the past two and a half years at this stage is in the toilet. Star Wars, as we said, hasn't even been on the big screen since Rise of Palpatine. Yes, that's what that movie should have been called. Because Palpatine came back. Somehow. But, oh, Jesus Christ. But anyway. But he also had frank and interesting comments about Marvel and Star Wars. Suggesting that the company is carefully thinking about its approach to those brands moving forward. What we have to look at at Marvel is that necessarily. Or sorry. Uh, Marvel is not necessarily the volume of Marvel storytelling 
but how many times we go back to the well on certain characters, Iger said. Sequels typically work well for us, but do you need a third or a fourth, for instance? Or is it time to turn to other characters? There's nothing in any way inherently off in terms of the Marvel brand. I think we just have to look at what characters and stories we are mining. Uh, right now you're mining the disastrous characters with terrible stories who in the comic books were rejected, cancelled, rebooted upwards of 20 times. For the characters you're focusing on and it's interesting now that Ant-Man is crashing and burning that you're like, do we really need a third and fourth movie with these characters? And he continues and if you look at the trajectory of Marvel over the last five years which is into the toilet you'll see a not a you'll see a not oh sorry lot why am I seeing not of newness he added now we're going to turn back to the Avengers franchise, but with a whole set of different Avengers as an example, because that's going to work out great for you. Star Wars, we made three that we called saga films, which is obviously the sources to George, or successors to George Lucas's first six. <laughs> successors, <laughs> more like fucking disasters. They did very well at the box office. Now the first one did. The rest of them declined in its numbers. They did very well at the box office. Tremendously well. As a matter of fact. <laughs> talk about cope. We've made two so-called standalones in Rogue One and Solo. Uh, Solo lost money. Rogue One did quite well. Solo was a little disappointment to us. A little disappointing. It lost you millions. Upwards. It was close to losing you $200 million. And he's like, it was a little disappointing. It gave us pause. Just to think maybe. Uh, the, may, to think maybe the Candace was a little too aggressive. Okay. And so we decided to pull back a bit. We still are developing Star Wars films. Pfft, are you? We're going to make sure that when we make one. I like that. We're developing Star Wars films. But when we make one. That it's the right one. So we are all. Or sorry. So we are being very careful there. What cope is this he's talking about? Let's put it this way. He's now discussing Marvel the way he discussed Star Wars. And what I mean by that is when he came out when Rise of Skywalker was coming out. His reaction to that was, yeah, there's too much Star Wars right now. We're going to push back and really take it slow. Slow it all down. Soon as that was said, we haven't had Star Wars on the big screen since that movie came out. None. Kathleen Kennedy has fired more directors than have worked for her. We've just been told Kevin Feige's Star Wars movie is off. It's cancelled. Done. Not happening. Patty Jenkins movie. Rogue Squadron. Done. Gone. Bye bye. Taika Waititi seems to be the only one that they're saying is in active development. Which who in the name of all that's holy wants a Taika Waititi Star Wars movie. And he wants to star in it as well. Because you know it worked so well for Thor Love and Thunder didn't it? What happened with the Ryan Johnson trilogy? Not movie. Trilogy. Yeah. They never mention that. They still haven't even told people. Yeah that's not happening. Because we know it's not happening. They just don't want to say it. Because it means we were right about. The Last Jedi. What about the two guys from. 
Game of Thrones. Remember, they were to have a trilogy. A trilogy, and they walked away from it. But now he's talking the exact same way about Marvel. Oh, we're putting out too much. We're going to slow down and pull back. That seems to be the kiss of death from Bob Iger. <laughs> I, that means you are going to, what, potentially put out one Marvel movie a year? And if it flops hard, like Ant-Man and the Wasp, Quantumania is doing right now, then what do you do? What's your reaction? Yeah. And then this stupidity of, we're going to stop making content for Disney+. Plus. No, you need to be pumping out new material for Disney+. Plus. But not just new material, good material. You can't just keep pandering and doing stupid shit. Like you did with the robot thing from... Um, Jesus, what was the movie even called that the robot yoke was in? Where it it's I had the scene looking to buy tampons and the, the transfer. Like, no, we don't want that stuff. You need to make content for a service that you are charging people for. <laughs> now you're telling people we're not going to make content the content we are going to make, we're going to sell to Netflix or Amazon or someone. <laughs> because we don't want to be spending the money. And the only way he figured he can get revenue in from a streaming service is to sell the content on the streaming service. Disney are in full panic mode. And rightfully so. And things are only going to get worse for them. They are winning the prizes from the stupid games they've been playing. They're alienating the audience. They're telling the rest of the audience. The likes of the original MCU fans and Star Wars fans. You are no longer required. And now look at what they found themselves in. And things are not bad. Even the parks. The Galactic Star Cruiser. The Star Wars Hotel. You know, the hotel that has zero bookings. Things have gone so well with that. But that thing is going to only now open two times a week. That's right. Two times a week. Because it's been such a disaster for them. And he's to blame. They brought back the guy who financially destroyed them to try and fix their financial problems. He overspent on Star Wars. He hasn't made that money back. And he crippled, crippled Disney with the Fox acquisition. Something they're not even scraping the bottom of the barrel in terms of getting money back for that. So full panic mode, Disney's in big trouble and they can't figure out what to do. With that, I'll leave it there for this one. So cheers and I'll catch you in the next one.